So we are nearly at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, one of the longest sermons, surely, as we have spread it over how many weeks? I think it's been like 20 weeks, hasn't it? But yes, it's been really rich, quite challenging. I think some of it is very difficult because it gives you this vision of how you might live, which is very different from some of the norms that we have. Everything from blessed be the poor to going through the narrow gate to do not judge and how to pray. And I guess with all of that building up, we should expect the end of this text to be reasonably challenging. After all, I feel it's been steadily getting more and more challenging as we get towards the end. Kind of almost like Jesus is saying, look at this. This is the vision. Are you ready to go for it? But this passage, which is the second to last passage we're going to be looking at in this series, Um, is one which I think has sometimes been a little misused. So as we watch it together, perhaps think, how have I seen this passage used and where might it have been misused? Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognise them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? or figs from thistles. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So, like I said, reasonably challenging. And when I look at this text, I have heard it used so many times to say you can recognize people by their fruit, and there are some people who produce good fruit and some people who produce bad fruit. And I want to say that throughout the whole of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus isn't saying point at other people. He's saying, look at yourself. How are you going to live? And when I look at this text, one of the things that seems very true to me is that I do not know anyone who just produces good or bad fruit. Everyone I know has a little bit of a mixture in them. Certainly, I definitely produce both good and bad fruit. There are those times when I say something a little bit sharper than I mean, and it really hurts someone. Sometimes you can say something a little bit wrong, and it lives with them. You know, where you say something just that bit tactless and it hurts them and they remember it. Certainly people have said things to me that I remember that they probably never meant that continue to bear bad fruit in my life going forward. I like to think that I am also sometimes someone who bears good fruit, that encourages people and walks with people. And sometimes you see them growing a little bit happier and more confident in themselves. Certainly, I felt God around helping me be fruitful at some times. So perhaps instead of using this as a metaphor for saying, those are the bad people, they bear bad fruit, those are the false prophets, they wear sheep's clothing. Instead, it would be better to use all of these metaphors as a means for examining our own lives. What if instead of every day you suddenly become a good person through an instant conversion experience? What if instead of suddenly becoming a good tree who doesn't grow good fruit, not fawns, instead it was kind of a moment by moment experience? And when I think about this, I think quite a lot about 12 step programs. So the people I know in my life who struggle with addiction, you might say that looking at their lives, they have on average borne a lot of bad fruit. And yet, in the 12-step program, they say every day you have to make the decision, who are you going to be? Are you going to remain sober? Are you going to put time into your relationships? And I think that that's quite a good metaphor. Am I going to try and nurture the parts of myself that bear good fruits rather than the parts of myself that have fawns? So seen from that angle, the idea that you could just suddenly make a decision to be a good fruit tree and then you will never bear bad fruit again, that might be one of the choices that does lead to destruction. So perhaps instead of seeing ourselves as one plant that bears good or bad fruit, we should see ourselves as an orchard with many plants. 
a person with lots of tendencies and passions and habits and loves. And equally, when we come to the section about false prophets, what if the false prophets are not others who disguise themselves in order to deceive us, but instead the many ways that we tell little lies to ourselves to disguise our own truly selfish motives as noble purposes and so deceive ourselves? And I think that that can sometimes be true. Like, I look at my lawn. Now, my lawn is growing about a foot higher than everybody else's lawn. And I tell myself sometimes that I am encouraging the bees because it is no mow May. Now, to be honest, I have also done no mow April. So to claim that it was just no mow May is just false. <laughs> and yet it makes me feel better about myself if I think, well, at least I'm encouraging bees so I don't have to feel bad about not mowing my lawn. Equally, what if we don't take a long and careful look at the fruits of others' actions and instead try and find out who we are and what are the truths about what we are and the effects of our own actions? And I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because Jesus is talking to this community of mostly farmers and fishermen. So the fruit and allergy will really speak to them. Thus, you will know them by your fruits. And perhaps because we live in a very different society, one might say a consumerist society for all good and ill in that, we should say, you'll know yourself by your bank statement. Where is your priorities? Where have you actually lived that out? Instead of you'll know yourself by your fruit. You'll know yourself a little better and what you value by where you put your resources and energy and time and love. But even when choosing to view these metaphors primarily as about ourselves and about others, it is still possible to expand their scope beyond the individual. Because we have groups of people that we walk with, our families, our churches, our friends, our neighborhoods. And we can collectively ask ourselves these same questions. How is this church bearing good fruit? Where are the fawn bushes? How can we encourage the good fruit rather than the fawns? What decisions have we made that we continue to fall back on the easy path of least resistance rather than facing hard choices that confront us as life gets more difficult? What inconsistencies do we have as a family, as a church, as a community that could be laid bare by comparing the things that we believe to be true about ourselves? with the facts about how we live? Are some of the things we say in our work, in our communities, in reality, no more than sheep's clothing thrown on the back of ravenous wolves who are concerned about themselves far more than others? And that's not to say that I think that there are deep problems with this church. I just think it's always very important to keep thinking how could we be doing better? Where are the hypocrisies? How can we continue to grow as a community that bears fruit? And perhaps even the different ways of understanding these metaphors are themselves ways of growing into the person that you are becoming. Not only in this text and in this prayer, but also in this world. How can we choose to grow the parts of ourselves that are growing fruit and to cut back the bits of fawn bushes. When we look at ourselves inwardly, where do you see yourself and your focus and your energy? Where is the fruit? So sometimes I look at my week and I think, oh, that bit was fruitful. And then all of this other bit, which was very worthy, actually didn't bear any fruit. Or maybe it made me quite crabby and then I was a bit horrible to someone. Um, and it's always worth looking at that. And where do you see the destructive tendencies? When you look at yourself over time, are you growing up the trellis towards the fruit? Or do you see yourself bending round and back towards bitterness? And where are the destructive fawn bushes growing more established in your home orchard? How can you tell the difference between what is really good fruit in your life and where there are thorns? 
Now, those are big questions, and I obviously don't have all of the answers, and I suspect you have many of the answers, as you are all very wise and worthy people. Um, but there are a couple of things that I think. So I think the first one is, is, is kind of after something, you ask yourself, how do you feel? Now, I don't know about you, but I have some friends that after I've met with them, I feel like a better person. Like, they're so kind, and they're so worthy, and they make me want to feel like I'm a better person, and that makes me feel kind of good about myself. And then there are some friends I have who I really enjoy talking to, but they're just a little bit nasty about everyone. And afterwards, you come back and you don't quite feel clean. I don't know if you have any relationships like that. But in my life, there are lots of instances where I look back and think, oh, that wasn't the person I want to be, or that was an aspirational person that I could be. I think another way that you can kind of look back and think, is this fruitful or is it a fawn bush in my life is the reaction of other people. Now, other people do, in fact, normally tell you the truth one way or another, even if they're avoiding talking about an issue. Um, and honestly, if you have a community like this one where they love you and they walk with you, they will look and want the best for you. Um, and perhaps they aren't like forward and challenging you, but you can sort of see how people are responding to things and think, oh, is that a fruitful part of my life or is it maybe a thorn bush? And I guess, as Jesus says, in the end, you will know it by the way it's going. So the truth will come out. I think was that saying, isn't it, that the lie will make itself around the world before the truth has got its boots on. But the truth is that Whatever's going on underneath your intentions, your self, your, the way you're growing, that will become clear in the end. So even if you feel it's not clear in the moment, it will become clear in the end. But as with all of these passages from the Sermon on the Mount, they are difficult, they are challenging. It's meant to be a challenging statement where Jesus says, come on, step up. You can be the best version of yourself. We can build the kingdom of God. It's important that you don't let them terrify you because if you terrify you, no one does their best when they're terrified, right? Everyone needs space to grow into the person that they are. So I think all of these passages, especially these ones near the end, it's important to remember that Jesus is a man of love and a man of mercy. So while you can hold yourself to account and judge yourself and look at the thorn bushes, definitely look at the thorn bushes, but ultimately it is about grace and God's arms are always open. God is always ready to accept you. God does want you to grow into the best person you are, but that's partly because it will be better for you as well as better for the rest of the world. I don't think that God's love is conditional it's like a parent's love, a good parent's love. I know that some of you have experience of bad parenting, but a parent who accepts you as you are longs to see you as the best that you can be and encourages you, but also offers you this challenge, like how can you be someone that bears fruit? Here are some ways of thinking about it.